us city dwellers go to parks to enjoy nature. But we each have our own ideas about camping. Some campers say the way to enjoy nature is to experience it in its untouched state. Other campers say the way to enjoy nature is to experience it in a civilized surrounding. Some campers believe the best way to enjoy nature is to get off by yourself. Other campers believe the best way to enjoy nature is in the company of others. Some campers insist that you can't really experience nature unless you're roughing it. Other campers argue that you don't have to suffer to experience nature. Sometimes it seems these people will never see eye to eye. Hey, come on you guys. You're both right. Bible, man originally lived in the Garden of Eden, where he was at one with nature and in harmony with all living things. He tended the garden, and the garden provided for all his needs. Then man was cast out of Eden into the wilderness. Because you have eaten from the fruit I forbade you, a cursed shall be the ground on your account. With labor you shall win your food from it all the days of your life. It will grow thorns and thistles for you, none but wild plants for you to eat. Dust you are, to dust you shall return. Man believed the way back to the Garden of Eden was to tame and order nature according to the divine plan he saw in the sky. The sky was thought to be the home of God, a heavenly universe where perfect planets moved in perfect orbits. By shaping the world according to God's plan, man believed he could recreate his lost paradise. Renaissance man based his way of life on this view of nature. For Renaissance man, nature in its wild state was like a child. Only by proper education and management could the child grow to take its rightful place in society. The uneducated child, on the other hand, had no place in society. He was a misfit, a weed. And just as a weed is a threat to the welfare of the garden, so the misfit was a threat to the welfare of society. Through constant diligence, Renaissance man thought he could make his world as perfect as God's sky. But in 1609, when Galileo looked through his newly invented telescope and became the first person to see God's sky close up, what he saw revolutionized man's view of nature. I have been led to the opinion and conviction that the surface of the moon is not smooth, uniform, and precisely spherical, as a great number of philosophers believe it to be, but is uneven, rough, and full of prominences, being not unlike the face of the earth, relieved by chains of mountains and deep valleys. Once man saw that God's sky was as irregular as man's earth, he could no longer believe in the sky as the home of God. And so he began to look for God's image elsewhere. Before Galileo, mountains were seen as blemishes, warts and blisters on the face of the earth. After Galileo, these same rugged peaks came to be seen as the handiwork, if not the very image of God's majesty. Man was no longer so sure he could improve upon nature. As the French philosopher Rousseau wrote in 1780, God makes all things good. Man meddles with them, and they become evil. He confuses and confounds time, place, 
a natural condition. He mutilates his dog, his horse, and his slave. He loves all that is deformed and monstrous. He will have nothing as nature made it, not even man himself. Rousseau's view came to be known as the romantic view of nature. While the Renaissance view held that man could improve upon nature, the romantic view held that nature could help man improve himself. As the romantic poet Wordsworth wrote, whate'er its mission, the soft breezes can come to none more grateful than to me. Escaped from the vast city, where I long had pined a discontented sojourner, now free, free as a bird to settle where I will. It is shaken off, that burden of my own unnatural self. The Canadians of Wordsworth's time did not feel as kindly towards nature as Wordsworth did. They feared it, fought it, and conquered it. But as the country became more civilized, Canadians began to place greater value on communing with nature. In Ontario, the first area set aside for public use was Niagara Falls. In 1893, Algonquin Park was established for the benefit and enjoyment of Ontario's future generations. Since then, over 120 provincial parks have been created. As we have seen, not all campers agree on the best way to enjoy nature. You, you enjoy nature by getting away from it all in an untouched wilderness. You have a romantic view of nature. You, you enjoy nature by taking the comforts of home to a well-planned setting. You have a renaissance view of nature. Though the Renaissance and Romantic views of nature may seem incompatible, they can often exist side by side, even within the same person. The same campers who enjoy recreation parks can often enjoy the beauty of a rugged landscape. And the same campers who enjoy wilderness parks can often enjoy the beauty of a well-tended garden. Once we accept this apparent contradiction, we will come to value and enjoy all our experiences of nature. <laughs> 